There are two ways that a company could prepare its statement of cash flows. There's the indirect method, which is far and away the most common approach, but companies can also use the direct method to make their statement of cash flow. So I want to introduce you to that concept in this video. By the way, either method that is used, the basic idea behind the statement of cash flows is you're trying to figure out why a company's cash balance changed over time. So that's the same whether you use the direct method, indirect, that doesn't matter. We're trying to figure out why the cash balance changed. Because, because if you just say, well, statement of cash flows, oh, maybe it's just about figuring out how much cash the company has. That's not accurate because actually you could just look at a company's balance sheet. If you want to know, so let's take this Ewok Corporation and we say, okay, how much cash did this company have? If we look at the, let's say the most recent balance sheet date, December 31st, 2022, we look and we say, oh, they have $530,000 of cash. And then the prior year, they had $501,000 of cash. So we can say, okay, cash went up by $29,000. But why did it go up? Did it go up because the company's borrowing a lot of money? Did it go up because the company's generating a lot of cash from its operations? That's what the statement of cash flows is all about. And that doesn't change whether using the direct or the indirect method. Okay, what really changes, the big difference between the direct and the indirect method is the way that this section in the operating activities is presented. But let me back up and give you a general overview in case you've never seen anything with a statement of cash flows before. So there's going to be three sections. And this is the same whether you do indirect or direct. There's always three sections. You've got cash flow from operating activities. That's the company's main business, buying and selling inventory, providing services, whatever its main core business is. Okay, so that's the operating activities. Then you have cash flow from investing activities. Okay, so that's buying and selling productive assets. So property, plant, and equipment, long-term investments. For example, the company bought a valuable for sale securities or something like that. So those things are going to go in the investing section. Okay, and then we've got cash flow from finance, financing activities. Okay, financing activities have to do with transactions that relate to the company's owners, which are the shareholders. So for example, you issue common stock or you repurchase stock, and then also transactions with the company's creditors. So if you were to issue debt and borrow money or repurchase debt and so forth. And also if the company pays dividends to its shareholders, that would be in there. Those are the types of things you would see in the financing activities section, right? So you've got cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. If you add them all together, you add them, so we're going to subtotal them. If you add them all together, that will give you the change in cash, okay, which should be the same as what happened with the change in cash that you see from looking at the last two balance sheets. Otherwise, you did something wrong when you were making your statement of cash flows, okay? And so, and just one final point. So the statement of cash flows is prepared for a period of time. In this case, it's for the year ended December 31st, 2022. It's not as of a point in time. The balance sheet is as a point in time. Snapshot here, December 31st, 2022, how much cash did the company have? Whereas the statement of cash flow is saying, okay, over the last period, in this case a year, how did the cash change? And we see, okay, this company... It, they generated two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars of cash flow from their operating activities. Okay, then they actually they had a negative cash outflow. They spent money uh, to buy property, plant, and equipment, so it was negative cash outflow for investing activities. And then they raised a hundred thousand dollars through financing activities by issuing some stock. Now, here's a key point. So, the investing section and the financing section. Okay, and again, these are just different ways to break out the cash flow to say, okay, why did this cash change over time? We're breaking it out so it's more informative for investors. Okay, So when we look at this, the investing section and the financing section are actually identical to the indirect method. Okay, So if you, if you already know the indirect method, uh, you already know how to make the investing section and the financing section. Now, the operating section, okay, the operating section, whether you use indirect or direct, you get to the same number of cash provided by operating activities. Okay, But the way you arrive at that number is what is the difference between the direct method and the indirect method. Okay, So I'll go in in more videos and future videos to show you exactly how to do the calculations. But let me just give you the broad overview right now. So when we do cash flow from operating activities, you're basically what you're doing is you're taking the income statement. Okay, remember the income statement was prepared on an accrual basis. Okay, we use accrual accounting to prepare the income statement. 
And so what you're really doing with the direct method of statement and cash flows is you are converting in the operating section here, you are you're taking the accrual basis income statement and you're converting it to a cash basis income statement. Okay, so when we look right here, all this, okay, so this is, we'll think of this as cash basis income statement. So what does that mean? Okay. When we prepared, so this sales revenue, $300,000 in the income statement, that was prepared on an accrual basis. What that means is there were some sales in there potentially that were made on credit. Okay, we didn't receive the cash yet, but we recognize the sale. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change that. We're going to take that $300,000 and we're going to get it to what's called cash received from customers or cash collected from customers. So that $300,000, we're going to change it to a cash basis revenue. And it's basically... $440,000. I will walk you through in future videos of, of how to use a comparative balance sheet. Uh, we're going to look at changes in account receivable and so forth to figure out how do we go from $300,000 to $440,000. So don't worry, we'll get into the mechanics and that in the future. But for right now, I just want to give you the, the basics. So we're going to take this re sales revenue and it's going to get converted to cash collected or cash received from customers. Okay. Cost of goods sold, that also is an accrual basis. Everything here is on an accrual basis. But cost of goods sold, we can convert to cash payments to suppliers. Okay, And sometimes you'll see the direct method. they got cash receipts and then cash received from customers. There could also be cash received from interest, whatever. But I don't have that in this example. But under cash payments, so we got cash payments to suppliers. That's when we take the cost of goods sold, 50000 and it's going to end up being seventy. Okay, Wages expense, 140000 we can convert that to cash payments to employees, which is 120,000, okay? Depreciation expense is a non-cash charge, right? Depreciation expense doesn't involve cash at all, so it's not even gonna appear in a cash basis income statement, which again, this operating section is basically a cash basis income statement, okay? Now, interest expense, $10,000, we're gonna convert that to a cash basis. We have cash payments for interest, of twelve thousand dollars okay finally we see in the income statement here we have eight thousand dollars of income tax expense so we're going to get that to cash payments for income taxes of nine thousand dollars okay and then we you know we sum all these together that's where we get the 229 okay so i don't worry too much about how did i get from 300 to 440 and so forth because i'm going to show you in the videos to come the key thing to focus on right now is that the operating section which is the only thing that differed, the way it's prepared, it differs from the indirect method. Okay, this operating section is basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the accrual basis income statement. Okay, we're gonna take the income statement. We're gonna go line by line and convert, e convert each of these line items to the cash basis. Okay, that's what we're doing in the operating section for the direct method of the statement of cash flows.